Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about portfolio sites. So let's get into it. So the question in question today was a little bit of a story, but I'll see if I can keep it brief. So hey Frederick, I hope things are going well. I've been facing a dilemma and it's, I, would be great, I would be grateful for any input. I've come to realize that it's time for me to make a portfolio website. Great stuff. And I've also realized that I don't have all that many projects to show. Now, I asked myself, what is the purpose of a portfolio? And from my perspective, the purpose is to showcase to an employer that you, I am familiar with certain tools. The problem I have is that I am more curious about learning tools by looking at the source code and understanding it from that perspective. So my thought was maybe I could do that instead of making projects because I'm not so interested in just making projects for the sake of making projects. So my thought is maybe I can answer Stack Overflow questions and maybe I can create articles where I explain what I have learned. But I'm worried that recruiters will not think that's all that interesting. So the short answer is I think that you have the right attitude. I think you're on the right track and I will explain why I think that you should not be, not, you should not be so worried about the fact that people will not look at the thing that you're actually producing. Let me explain. So I'm going to tell you a secret and it's going to be a really big secret and you can't tell anybody about it because as soon as this is like slips out and more people know about it oh, there's so many people who are going to get really really angry with me and say that I let the cat out of the bag and the big secret guys is that most people who hire developers who are looking for portfolio sites and like junior looking for junior developers or like freelancers whatever they have no fucking clue what they're looking for they have not, no technical skills their only thing that they look at is the impression that they get from the thing that they see. Let me explain that as well. If you go to a social media profile, doesn't matter, take whichever plat platform, and you see that there's a profile with one follower that gives you one impression. If you go to another one and you see that there's a few million followers that gives you a different perspective or a different impression. I hope you see what I'm saying here. It's the same thing with us developers. You're basically better off if you want to get a job from or have prospects from portfolio sites to create things that give a good impression. Now the problem with that is that you can't go crazy with it. So if I say that you should go for a good impression, you might think that, well, Frederick said that the impression is the most important thing. Well, then I'll just go and I will create a bunch of websites. Or I'll use some templates from some like template website and I'll just create a lot of stuff. Now that may work for a non-technical recruiter. Now you're lucky in this sense because the vast majority of people who are looking for programmers and are actually even looking at a portfolio site are people who have no tech skills. These people are very easy to fool because they don't know what they're looking for. They have they don't know all our languages and like tooling and like what's relevant, what's not relevant. The only thing they in general know is that all right, we have this profile, we're looking for this sort of developer. And if that just happens to be someone who is in the range of where you are, they're going to look at your profile and then they know, OK, we need these tools. And then they're going to check your tools listing and see, OK, he, this person sort of seems to know the stuff. They have most of the stuff that I'm looking for. And then they're going to start looking at passion and they're going to look at, OK, portfolios like what is this? Does, what, what's the vibe I'm getting from this person, right? That's a non-technical person, and that's the most of, of uh, the recruiters out there. Now, the problem with that is that they might be impressed by all your static websites that come from, I don't know, Create React app or, or some WordPress thing that you just bought or like put up. And if that's the end of the story, that's hopefully going to get you a call, and then you can take it from there. You still need to back up things in the coding interview and things that come after. But the worst thing that can happen for you is that the the recruiter realizes that, all right, or has a work process at the very least, where they gather up some candidates and then they ask someone from the company that they are recruiting for to look at these pro these profiles. Now, on um, if you're really lucky the person on the inside of that IT company is also going to be a non-technical person who might select some things based on the stack. They might just look at your tool listing and stuff like that. If you're really unlucky, and this I'm very sorry to say happens quite a lot, 
they're going to ask me or someone like me or someone like my boss or someone like my coworkers. They're going to ask for a developer to help out with figuring out if this is worth an investment or not. And quite a lot of technical managers or hiring engineers have an understanding of of uh, different levels of course as well but they have an understanding of what quality software looks like now that doesn't mean that they're gonna burrow down like usually what happens when we're looking for people or when we're screening people is that you have all this stuff ideally that the person has done and then you just pick if there's too much for you to in a reasonable amount of time look at everything you're just gonna you're just gonna randomly pick some stuff that seems interesting and you're gonna have a like a glance at what's here now if I glance at your portfolio site then I can see and I've seen this more than once I can tell you that and I can very clearly see that this is just a static website that's all it is and I can even go into I can very quickly see that okay this person hasn't actually written this code this is mostly jQuery and some widgets and stuff like the basically what you have done is as I said you practically just put up a HTML template and taken somebody else's code and like latched it together or if you have even done that some cases they've just copy pasted a template and I can immediately see that that Sure, the website looks great, but it's not built with any of the tools that we're using. It's not using any practice, like it's not, not it's not made with by somebody who knows what they're doing. With at least not within the tools that we're looking for. So you can't just go for that. You have to you you, you have to show. Uh, like, that's why I think that the subscriber has the right idea because you don't really know who's going to look at your stuff. Like the only thing you can go for is the impression. That's the one thing that always will make a difference. But you're much better off to represent yourself if that makes sense because you can make a positive impression on people and have them go wow this person stands out without having to create a bunch of dummy sites which are like that just doesn't really inspire you or anything like that you're actually in my opinion i mean the person was mentoring stack overflow if you have answered like several thousands or hundreds of stack overflow questions and you have a pretty high rating that is a very meaningful thing that's something that definitely stands out i've had coworkers who've had I mean, th this guy was really modest, but he's like one of the uh, one of the highest ranked Android developer like in and the Android category on Stack Overflow because he's helped out so many people with Android questions. And this stands out. This, this was, was one of the, one of the things that actually made a difference when we were when people were talking to him uh, when he was uh, applying for a job. Right. And you can do the same thing. There's so many ways that you can stand out as a software developer. You don't have to like just create these dummy sites. The thing that you're going for is a positive impression that showcases that you have some activity going on. You're doing something more. You're not like other like you're not like other developers you're you're passionate about what you do so if your thing is to r look at source code and write articles like you write those articles you just don't expect people to read every article just show like that you're actually doing it and then let that be the end of the story so what i want you to take away from this is that the secret to making a good portfolio site is to be a bit of an entrepreneur to understand that what you're going for is to give a good impression that's what you're basically after you want to show that you have something that stands out on your CV and that can be many many things you can absolutely put up like w nice websites and so forth but the thing is guys the best things that stand out are usually the thing that you can like e appreciate at a glance these are usually things like oh you went to MIT you went to Harvard you went to or something like that you took some courses there like honest to god I've seen people who have like reached out based on the fact that you took one course just because it was at Harvard or MIT or something like that that was something that stood out because they know like the recruiter they should recognize the brand you can do things like take a lot of courses and you can just stack up a bunch of courses as long as there's just a number that represents in your CV that these are the courses that I've taken I mean nobody's going to read through a hundred courses but the number that you take in a hundred courses on Udemy or something like that even if it's for free even if it doesn't like if it's not the thing that is going to dictate everything it's just something that stands out you did stuff you have invested this person can do the same thing with Stack Overflow if you're into Stack Overflow answer questions and showcase that yeah I have this amount of rating on Stack Overflow this is a big number that has some relevance it might be too technical for someone who is a non-technical recruiter but it's something that will stand out and remember the impression is the important part but you can't just make fake 
bad stuff all the time and expect that that's going to get you through the door every time because in many cases the recruitment process includes a step where you get to be screened by someone who is a developer and if they're anything if they're worth their salt they will start to notice that well this person has really like they, they sure you have a lot of projects but like everything is like a hello world app or a to do app or something like that there's no substance here so that's what you're going for you want to give a strong good impression first impression that's the important part the second part is that you need some quality as well and I argue that the best way to achieve that is to just follow your passion do what feels right do do the thing and make it public so people can see that you really care about what you do have a great day